we have our progressive news headlines as we do every day. Let's get started. It is uh, Tuesday, October the 20th. A deadlocked U.S. Supreme Court let stand a Pennsylvania court ruling permitting the state's election officials to count mail in ballots that arrive up to three days after November 3rd. Hooray! I'd like to play Bruce Springsteen's You're Going Down, Down, Down to President Trump <laughs> right now in the middle of this news story, but. I digress. Uh, it, anyway, this is obviously a major victory for voting rights and a dire sign of what's to come if Amy Coney Barrett is confirmed. She's not into that sort of thing. Hi. Chief Justice John Roberts joined the high court, three remaining liberals there in voting to reject Pennsylvania Republicans' request to block a recent state Supreme Court ruling extending the ballot deadline to 5 p.m. on November 6th. It should be that. You should be able to vote on November 3rd and put it in the mail on November 3rd, election day, and then it should be able to come in. The Supreme Court's decision represents the latest blow to Republicans' aggressive nationwide effort to restrict mail-in voting through the courts as Democrats and allied advocacy groups defend expansions of ballot access amid the coronavirus pandemic. Check it out. It is amazing that this hinged on Chief Justice Roberts joining with the high court's liberals. Roberts, he has a history of, um, you know, wanting to forward voter disenfranchisement. Uh, so I don't know what happened to him. Maybe he had a come to Jesus moment or something or come to the reality that uh, maybe he doesn't like fascism and he just wants Trump out. It's hard to know, but either way, it was a good day for justice at the Supreme Court. Moving on, a group of indigenous women and their allies are urging heads of major global financial institutions to stop propping up the tar sands industry. They demand these companies sever all ties with the sector's climate wrecking pipelines, as well as the massively destructive extraction product, uh, projects that feed them. Supporting the call is a diverse group of 150 organizations like Another Gulf is Possible. Get on there. Join that. You like those words? It's like from Occupy Wall Street, another world is possible, another gulf is possible. Um, it's another gulf is possible collaborative. There's global exchanges involved and the indigenous environmental network. The demand comes in an open letter signed by over 40 indigenous leaders. It's good. People are doing the work out there. And um, as soon as we get Trump out of office, perhaps we can start pushing our... Um, hopefully democratic centrists over to the left. We shall see if that is a possibility. Moving along today in absurdity, <laughs> more than 1,000 current and former officials at the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Pre Prevention are denouncing President Trump and the federal government's disastrous response to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is a news story that pretty much comes out every single day. Anyway, these particular folks signed on to an open letter demanding that the prestigious public health agency be allowed to resume its crucial role in protecting the health of the nation's people. 1,044 physicians, nurses, scientists, and other health professionals at the CDC write that the absence of national leadership on COVID is unprecedented and dangerous. It's not just, oh, well, baloney. Dr. Rick Bright, the former director of the Biomedical Advanced Research and Development Authority at the Department of Health and Human Services, who publicly announced his resignation from the National Institute of Health on October 7th in a scathing statement, condemned Trump's deadly ineptitude. Here he is speaking on 60 Minutes. In case you don't watch 60 Minutes. And a lack of leadership. Oh, it's not loud. I am frustrated at the lack of urgency to get a head start on developing life saving tools for Americans. I'm frustrated at our inability to be heard as scientists. Those things frustrate me. Was that senior Macy's executives are receiving millions of dollars in bonuses, even as mass job cuts put their leadership failures on full display. The top executives were given equity awards 
of $9 million two weeks after the company announced it would reduce their staff by 3,900 associates. That's right. They dumped 3,900 people, Americans, on their asses and took $9 million from the company. Insane. CEO Jeff Gannett received restricted stock <sighs> worth $3.7 million on Ju July 9th, according to a filing reported by Bloomberg. This is just basically business as usual for, you know, I'd love to report a story if we ever get one of like the CEOs decided they weren't going to take that money because they already had $9 million and they gave the 3,900 employees, you know, however much a piece that they were going to make. How much do you need? It's insane. All right. Anyway, in the past, Macy's top management options and performance shares were tied to reaching their goals. But clearly, they are not reaching their goals this year because <clears throat> COVID and trickle-down economics and no stimulus and all of the things that we are all living through. But, of course, the awards handed out last week are going to be able to be kept by these top people as long as they remain on the job for a few years, regardless of how well Macy's actually does. It's, it's vile. It's terrible. Here's the, here's the images you saw a moment ago. Contrary to President Donald Trump's claim that the win by Joe Biden in November would spell economic catastrophe, a Goldman Sachs analyst is telling the bank's clients that a blue wave of Democratic victories next month will likely provide a substantial boost to the U.S. economy. Even Goldman Sachs is saying to vote blue. Democratic lawmakers approving a substantially more uh, fiscal support would be responsible for the boost in the form of COVID-19 relief, infrastructure spending, and climate legislation. While predictably characterizing Biden's proposed tax hikes on corporations and the rich as negative, Goldman Sachs chief economist wrote, that the supposed downsides of the tax increase would be outweighed by the boost to growth from fiscal stimulus. You're watching Act TV. I'm Juliana Forlano. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel. Thank you to the 40,000 plus people who have subscribed since we launched on YouTube. And thank you for the, oh, countless, I got half a million people who watch us and find us on Facebook and also our fans on Twitch. Thank you so much for supporting the work that we do here.